various places, Scott Valley, Palermo, Burnt Ranch, and all. what happened there? Right, right. Well, I've had a, a, an illustrious career. I've spent 13 years, uh, well, about 30 years altogether as an educator, and uh, spent 13 years as a school district superintendent. And uh, one of the issues I had, uh, one of the first issues that I had was when I was with uh, Palermo School District. And I had worked there for several years, uh, four or five years. Um, during that tenure, my school board changed. So the school board that hired me was not the same school board that I had after probably three, three and a half years. Very different vision, very different uh, ideas of, of what we thought would be best for children. Uh, during that particular time, I uh, was diagnosed with an illness called Meniere's disease. And uh, unfortunately for me, Meniere's disease is a pretty serious illness. It causes uh, uh, balance issues, uh, severe vertigo. So it took me uh, a few years actually, uh, up until not too long ago, to, to really get, I don't want to say the cure for it, but to get me to where I could live well and, and manage, my, uh, manage my life in a way that I could be effective and, and uh, do the things that I needed to do. So unfortunately, during that tenure, um, I was diagnosed with Meniere's disease, ended up missing a, a quite a bit of work. Um, I would just have dizzy spells and bouts of vertigo, and I might miss the whole day of work. Uh, I missed a couple of, of very important meetings, negotiation meetings. And uh, one day I came into work and they said, well, uh, Brian, it was nice knowing you and uh, here's, here's your, your final walking papers. Uh, no, explanation, no explanation given. Um, and that was that. So um, it was not a, not a, not a great ending to, to that career, but, uh, or to, to my tenure in uh, Palermo. But uh, I kind of understood at the time. I missed quite a bit of work. Uh, there was really no hope of me getting any better. Um, I'd been to Stanford. Uh, a few times, seen numerous doctors for that particular illness, and uh, it was just a really rough time in my life. And uh, fortunately, since then, I've, I've gotten some help and uh, found ways to, uh, to be able to manage it. Now, on to Burt Ranch. Sure. Oh, well, Burt Ranch, it actually comes from the, the, the same issue. Uh, when I worked for Burt Ranch, I just took that particular position as a part-time job. I've been kind of retired for the last few years. I always called myself uh, semi-retired. Uh, probably never completely fully retire, but uh, I saw an ad in a paper for, uh, or an ad in an ed join for uh, this particular position in Burt Ranch School District. Uh, it was two days a week or a couple days a week, so it was a part-time job, which I thought would be perfect. Uh, would get back into education, still be able to do something for the kids, uh, still be able to, to work in my profession. And part of the problem with Burt Ranch is, is they would not accommodate my medical illness. So my condition precludes me from wearing a mask. Um, if I wear a mask for too long, I can wear one for a couple minutes or maybe 10 or 15 minutes. But after that, I'll start getting dizzy. I'll start having uh, bouts of vertigo, uh, balance, having balance issues. Well, that particular school board would never accommodate that particular uh, issue. So they demanded that if I go to the school, I had to wear a mask. Well, I can't wear a mask. So I'm actually one of the few people that you'll ever meet that actually has a note from a doctor that says Brian cannot wear a mask. So uh, other issues that I had with them that, that started off even before that was that they wanted their kids to be masked. Uh, it's a school of about 60 kids, 50, 60 kids um, in Trinity County. And they wanted the kids to be masked uh, inside the classrooms, outside the classrooms. And they even wanted them to be masked while they played basketball, sports, volleyball. And those of you that know me, or those of you know anything about me, that's not gonna happen on my watch. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not, I believe that masking these kids for the last two years was detrimental to their health, and I will not do it. So they ended up buying out my contract um, and uh, saying goodbye, and we, we split. Um, wasn't amicable, um, it wasn't fun, it wasn't enjoyable, but it was for the right reason. It was for the right reason. Well, I'll go back to the beginning to uh, Siskiyou County in Scott mm -hmm. Valley. What happened there? Oh, Siskiyou County. Well, I had an issue in Siskiyou County. I had an issue with, uh, that was a, a bullying issue. And um, one, we had a boy, I, I don't remember if he was in fourth or fifth grade at the time. This is probably 10, or 10 years ago or so. I um, had an issue with, with a boy bullying um, other children. And it would go on and on. It lasted for several weeks. So I would get calls from uh, moms, dads, grandmas, and people that were, were uh, concerned about it. And I had a principal that wasn't doing anything about it. Every time I talked to her, she'd say, well, it's taken care of, I'll take care of it, don't worry about it, etc." So finally I got one more call, and so I decided to go talk to the young man myself. And so what happened, he admitted to me that he was bullying. Um, we made sure that uh, the kids knew that it wasn't gonna happen again. 
Uh, and I ended up suspending that boy for uh, probably two or three days. I don't remember now, but it would, would have probably been a two or three day suspension. Well, come to find out right after I suspended that child, my board president called me and said, well, you can't suspend that child. And I said, well, what do you mean? He's already suspended. It's already done. And she said, well, no, the, you know, he's a good kid. He, he doesn't deserve it. Um, his parents do great things for the community. Well, little did I know that, that my board president and his parents were really good friends. So not that that matters to me because he's still suspended. So that was an issue that I had there. Um, I ended up letting everyone in the district know what had happened and that my board president had, had, had got on to me for suspending those, that particular kid. So I let them know that if they had issues with bullying, um, that they could come directly to me and I would take care of it because that's something that we're not going to put up with. I don't care where we're at, who it is, uh, what your connections are to what family. If you bully kids, I'm going to take care of it. And I let them know that. So what my board president did was um, at the next board meeting, they uh, suspended me and they were upset because I had sent out an email to everyone um, in the district to let them know exactly what had happened, what my board president had said. So they suspended me for that and uh, tried to uh, get an attorney to investigate. Well, they did get an attorney to investigate it, their attorney, um, to see if I'd done anything wrong by uh, letting everyone know a, a personal issue. Uh, of course, he found that there was nothing wrong that I had done. I was just letting everyone know about a situation and that I would take care of it. Um, so what happened with them is I ended up saying, well, I, I can't work here because I, I can't work under these conditions. Every time I uh, discipline a student or, or have a major issue, I'm obviously not going to have the support of particularly our board president. So what I did was I just found another job. So um, at that particular, uh, uh, told them I wasn't coming back at the end of that year, so uh, resigned from that position to and found another position. You can't control what others do, but how do you prevent that from happening in Shasta County should you be elected to the position? <laughs> I, I'm, uh, can you explain to me exactly? Well, just issues with boards and all that. You know, how, how do you, how do you? Well, the good news is, is in, in this particular position, the county superintendent of schools is an elected position, so they don't work for a school board. Um, so they work in conjunction with each other. More, more of a cooperative, okay. more of a cooperative uh, working together. They have completely different duties and completely different responsibilities. So the school board doesn't control what the county superintendent does, nor does the county superintendent get to tell the school board uh, what's important or, or their agenda. So, have you or what have you learned through you know, Butte, Trinity, Siskiyou County through these experiences? Well, I think the main thing to learn is to be very careful where you take a position or where you take a job. Um, uh, someone, uh, someone of my nature uh, that just can't stand by to, to watch kids, uh, uh, negative things happen to kids, I, I'm the kind of person that is going to stand up and say something about it, even if it costs me a job, even if it costs me uh, my livelihood. And I, I've proven that I'll do that, and I'll do it again. Should you get elected? You've said something, I have some stuff here from your website, your campaign website. What would you do? How could you go against you know, if, if mask mandates are reinstituted, or you talked about um, critical race theory and, and I, gender identity confusion and common core, what, how do you at this level change things? Well, I think as far as the mask mandates and the testing mandates, I, I would just refuse to do it. We're just not doing it. I, anyone under my care and my, my supervision, I would not require them to wear a mask. If you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. Uh, if you want to get tested, get tested. Um, so it just wouldn't happen. I would just say, no, it's not going to happen. We're not going to do it. It's not the government's business who's been, uh, uh, had a vaccine. It's not the government's business who's wearing a mask. So I just refuse, just, I just say, no, I just won't do it. I just won't enforce it. As far as critical race theory and those types of things that we're talking about too, or that, that you talked about, uh, those are things that are being pushed out by the state and by our county office of education. Um, our county office of education is training teachers in elements of critical race theory, uh, revisionist history. I will stop that. I will not do that. So that's, that's very easy to do. The County Office of Education is in charge of training teachers, in charge of training uh, board members, and in charge of training uh, school district administrators. And those types of trainings will not happen. Uh, to get away from some of those things too, we need to get out of the Common Core curriculum. Uh, common Core curriculum is not a curriculum that you're going to want your kids uh, learning from. 
It's a, a nationwide curriculum that was set up by the federal government to make sure that the whole your kids across the nation uh, receive the same education. Well, I'm from the school of thought that Shasta County needs are much different than Los Angeles, than San Francisco, than Chicago, Illinois. We want our own curriculum. We want to do things the way that we want to do them that will meet the needs of our communities and that will set up our students for success for the future. Are you concerned about state repercussions if you just say, no, I'm not gonna do this? I'm not concerned about that at all. <laughs> what would those repercussions be, right? That's what, what I'm asking. Right, what would they be? I mean, people say, well, they won't send us money. Well, the money that they're sending us back is our tax money in the first place. The, the government and the state doesn't make a product. They don't sell anything. It's our money in the first place. Well, what I would say if they didn't want to send us money, that we don't send it to them in the first place. Um, you're not going to be able to shut down a whole county. And, and this movement's even bigger than that. Well, you know, eventually, if other counties that near us uh, nearby us see what we're doing and that we're actually going to take our government back and it's going to be a government uh, of the people by the people well hopefully that will be contagious and that they'll want to do the same thing because what we really want is we just want to be free we want to be left alone we don't want mandates we don't want people telling us what we can and can't do especially the government so I'm here to be a representative of the people not not a liaison of the state of California uh, which is, is what we hear from our county office of education now. You have an elected official who thinks that they're supposed to just pass down information from the state and the federal government. No, as, as your elected county superintendent of schools, I will work for you, not for the state. So what will we see in classrooms? What do you want to see taught to the children in the classroom? Well, I'd like to see a well-rounded education, a basic education, just, just like I received as, as when I was in school. We need to make sure that our kids know how to read, know how to write, mathematics. If you look at the common core mathematics, there's not a lot of math in that math. So even parents have a hard time helping their kids with common core math. So it, it's, it's ludicrous to me that we're even doing that. We need, we need to, when we teach math, we need to teach math. Some of the other things I really like to do and promote would be um, uh, skilled trades. You know, when I, was, when I was in school, we had metal shop, electric shop. I even had a plastic shop when I was in school. So I like to be able to, to, to get back to those types of things. I have a, a kind of a funny story that I tell people um, uh, several years ago, or well, four or five years ago, five or six years ago, I had, my wife and I have a, a porch that is uh, all tiled, and it's probably five or six steps up, and it's, you know, 100 square feet or whatever it ends up being. So it's not a huge area, but it's tiled, and it doesn't look very pretty. So I told my wife one day, well, why don't I get a quote, and we'll, we'll, get, it, we'll get brick. We'll make it real nice, and it'll look beautiful. It'll be a beautiful entryway. So I got two quotes, and the, the lowest quote was, and I said to the gentleman, well, first of all, I can't afford $9,000 for, for a new, you know, front porch. I said, why is it so expensive? And he said, well, there's only two of us in town that know how to do it. And so it's a basic supply and demand. We're not teaching our kids those types of skills. So uh, it's just gonna be very expensive to do those things. Um, not only that, we need to teach kids basic things. I learned how to sew a button on a shirt from a teacher in school from a home ec class I had. I learned how to cook. I learned how to fry an egg. I learned how to make lasagna, bake a cake. All the basic skills that, that I would need to cook, I learned at school. Um, and there's, there's many more. Financial literacy is a huge thing for me. Uh, student loan debt, credit card interest. We don't teach any of those things to our kids. And it, it, to me, I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you, it's criminal. Because that, we need to be teaching kids life skills. Anything else you'd like to say? Well, I, thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you for coming.